All right, I'm going to break this tutorial up into a few two videos so that way whoever wants to watch one could watch it, whoever wants to skip it doesn't have to go through the whole video to find the other segment. First one, we're just going to go through the camera tracking. So I'm using Buju, it's been working fine for me, I have had no issues and it's very straightforward and simple. So first things first is you want to go and import the image sequence. So I am going to load this up. Now, I shot this with the GoPro 11 that has 60 frames per second, so I'm going to change it to that. Make sure that's at 60. Apply. Close. Now you want to click on Track Features. And some people make tutorials about uh, masking. I'm, I'm just going to go for it, and whatever happens, happens. If this does become a problem, then I'll mask it out. And if not, then that saves me time. So because this was shot on a GoPro in low light, um, I try to keep my ISO at 100 no matter what to try to keep the grain down. Uh, it's kind of blurry. So I'm going to change the, the scale to large, increase the sensitivity of the tracking. I bump this up to 25. This is 5. This is uh, min and max how far apart the, uh, the features are. So whenever the movement is quick, you want to enhance this and bring it up. It's not very quick in this shot, so I'm just going to leave it low. And that, that's about it for what I'm doing. So I'm going to click Start. Uh, it'll take a little bit of time because it's 5K uh, footage or 5,000 pixels tall. Um, I think it's, it's a little higher than 4K. I don't know how you would identify it, but it's going to take a minute to, uh, to track all this. So I'm just going to let it run. I'm going to pause the footage, and then as soon as it's done, I'll just unpause it and go from there. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to click on Camera Solve and just whatever's default, click Start. And that creates a uh, first look at the tracking. Now what I'm going to go do is 3D Task and then assess Lens Distortion because it's such a fisheye lens, if you will, a lot of wide angle stuff happening. There we go. Now if we look at the, uh, the 3D space, so we have something happening. So now what I like to do is set my own uh, markers or tracking points, if you will. So I'm going to go and uh, uncheck predictions. And then you're going to go to add locators. And I'll go to the first frame. And the reason why I do the locators is it helps really make things stick and not move. Anytime I've done an auto track, it always ends up moving. So this really helps finesse things and make it, make it solid. So I'm going to add a locator here, go to the last frame, go in, pop it right there, same one, and now I just kind of skip through it. So that's holding nice. I'm going to click add locator to add another one, go over here, going to go right up here, last frame, click right there, skip through it. That's holding. Go add another one. I'll try to go right over here. First frame. There we go. Then add another one down here. First frame. Right there. And as you can see, they're they're holding nicely. Now what I'll do is a little bit on the ground, so I'll do one right here, first frame, and because everything is like a grid in this environment, it makes it very easy for, uh, for these to stick. So I'll do the same thing over here, just kind of eyeballing it, like so. So that one, that one's moving. I have to make sure I put it in the right spot. And that one is as well. So I'm going to go to edit mode. Just that. So let's see. So that's sticking there. And it's breaking there. So what I'll do is, while I have this, I'll click solve adjust. There we go. Now that I have these, I'll click on Add Locator. Put one here. Make 
sure I'm putting it in the right spot. Yep. Solve adjust. Add locator. That's good. Add another one. Right over here. Now let me see. Yep, that's still in frame. Good, that's sticking. Solve adjust. There we go, so we have our Y. X and then we do have to add a Z. So I know this is halfway through the uh, frame, but if it sticks, it should stay in theory. I'll just adjust it a little bit there. So that's good. All right. And then we'll just do one more right there. All right. Toggle edit mode. Now I'm just going to set up the origin of my scene. So I'm going to select this. So that's going to be the origin. And now what I'll do is X. Y. And Z. So there's that. Now let's go into our orthographic view check predictions and I just want to see how these things are looking side view it might be good but the best way to check is just select these points and create a, uh, a plane select these points all right go back to orthographic view top view and as you can see this is this is looking really good the wall is nice and flat the ground let's go to side view so this is this is really nice we have a nice solid flush wall a nice flat ground this is going to help us really put the CGI elements in properly and have them stick now we'll just skip through a few frames make sure the walls stick into where the wall should be There we go. Wonderful. All right. So last but not least, we're just going to export the uh, the setup. So export camera. Change this to MS. I use 3D Max, so it's going to be a Max script. And we're just going to name it Lobby. Um, scale. This is all hypothetical because we're going to adjust the scale in 3D Max. I'm just going to make it 100. Click Save. There we go. Inside of Max, go to Scripting, Run Script, and now we're just going to load the script. There we go. Camera 1. Press H. Type Auto. I'm going to put this on a new layer. Call it Auto. These are all the auto tracks that are just useless visually for me. And then I'm just going to go in the Layer tab, hide that. Now I'm going to select these locators right here name this layer personal and then this one just miscellaneous and I like to keep these things organized so I'm going to make a new layer called tracking throw these three layers in there like so now with that being said uh, the miscellaneous I'm going to hide I'm going to select these 
change the color to lime green so they really stand out. Hold Alt, press B. So our window pops up, click Use Files. The script will automatically link it. Change start frame to one. It could be two, it could be five. Change it to one. There we go. So that's good. Now the last thing left to do is change everything so it's properly set up and to scale or as good as we could get it. So with just the line tool, I'm turning on snap and I'm just creating a few reference shapes for myself. One's the wall, one's the ground. Changing them to lime green. There we go. Now open up the hierarchy tab, select these two objects and just drag them onto the Buju data. There we go. Angle snap, rotate in 90 degrees. So that is looking good. So as you can see, the line has a slight angle to it. So that means we just got to rotate it this way just a little bit. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but we try to get it as close as we can. And that feels really nice. So now the last thing to do is get our scene to scale. So my business partner, Chuck, he's about six feet tall, maybe a little more, but that's what we're going to go off of. So what I'll do is I'll create a ground plane kind of where these markers are. And as you can see, because we are in proper perspective or whatever, and as long as we're snapping, things are going to be good. So I'm going to make a square right there. And I should have probably just measured how big these were, but we were on the fly in a coffee shop in a hotel lobby, so I wasn't really planning on doing anything like that. So I'll just move to this position. This is roughly where he's standing, like so. So now what I'll do is take this plane and move it under that main helper. And first I'll just, oh sorry, not this, the main. And then what I'll do is I'll change this pivot point to match the plane's pivot point. So that way we're now scaling the whole scene based on the ground of the feet of Chuck. So what I'll do is just quickly scale this up. As you can see, we're scaling, but nothing's changing because we're using the main Buju data uh, helper. There we go. So now I'll make a little biped object thingy and I'll make this person six feet tall. So five, six, there we go. As you can see, the ground level is where the square is. So now if we change this, if we select this and I start scaling it, I'm just gonna move it up right until this biped and the height of the character match. Again, this is all hypotheticals. This is just kind of guessing, but that's it. So now our scene is in theory to scale. And what you can do is uh, finish it off by doing some basic uh, model assets. So that way we can start actually doing the CG part. So what I'll do is create a quick little plane, convert to edit poly, just move this out here, move this out there move that up. Now if you click on the plus sign, do 2D zoom, you can zoom in right here. So as you can see there was a slight little edge. So what I'll do, and if we go, if it camera track properly, it should, should kind of stick pretty well. So let's see what this does. So that's, that's actually sticking very nicely. Alright, so I'll do the same thing here. So I'll go all the way out here. So there's our edge there, and I'll move this out over here. So sometimes when I'm modeling these environments from the footage, I'll skip through frames, and if the track is proper and you trust it, it should in theory work like a 3D blueprint for your uh, environment. So now this is where it's going to get really tricky to figure out how bad or good the track is. So now, so this is perfect. The lines are pretty well in place. Now as you can see there is a slight little angle. There's two ways of doing it. You could rotate the uh, the scene, the camera, or if you want you can just take this and skew it up just a little bit. Um, what I'll try to do is I'm going to take this pivot point of the Buju data and I'm going to adjust this pivot point to be right at this point right here. So like so. And now if I just take this and I rotate it ever so slightly, I could just skew the whole scene just up, just like that. And the reason why I'm doing it this way instead of just manipulating the plane, 
I want to keep this as natural and perfect as possible so that way when we create the 3D elements and put a car in or whatever, we don't get any distortion. I'm getting completely sidetracked with this tutorial. This is supposed to be tracking, not modeling. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Part one, tracking is done. And then the part two will be kind of laying out this environment so that way whoever doesn't want to watch the modeling doesn't have to.